Hello, I'm Paul. I'm Adam. And I'm Ben. And I'm Danny, also known as Winston from Ghostbusters. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> he comes in halfway through and doesn't get any of the credit. He is Winston. <laughs> Making a guest appearance here. <laughs> it's 1984. We're back. Oh, that is perfect. Mate. Oh shit! <laughs> and this is this is Film Busters. Film Busters. You want to know how disappointed I was about the Winston thing? Let me tell you about this. I love Ghostbusters so much, and then I found out Ernie Hudson, the guy who played Winston, that. They left so much of his footage on the cutting room floor because the studio was like, we want four, the four Ghostbusters and they wanted either John Candy or Jim Belushi to play the fourth Ghostbuster. And then one of them died and the other one couldn't do it. So Ernie Hudson was recruited. The studio left loads of his footage on the, on the cutting room floor. And for that reason, Ernie Hudson doesn't really have good memories of Ghostbusters. And that breaks my heart, man. Wow. As a kid, that was like, crucial that was key for me i don't i don't even think it was a race thing but who knows maybe it was but it's no coincidence that he was the one black guy who joined the team and they left him off all the marketing materials after the fact as well you see the marketing yeah, materials really? three others i, did, I, I never oh, even yeah. looked actually I never, I never looked. he's on yep. my little lego things i've got my little lego ghostbusters over there he's on there Aww. he's up on my canvas in the in the living pride room. of place pride of place yeah. pride of Beautiful. place yeah the bottom in the corner <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nearest me on the couch. <laughs> right, anyway, today we have our lovely friend here, Danny. It's been long overdue. We've been waiting a long time for this to happen. And I've finally. Been, I've been very excited. It is very here. excited to come on. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm very happy for the invitation. Oh, anytime, Danny. It's so great. We all know Danny very well. We know Danny from personal life. <laughs> Just so the listeners know, we know him for real. He's not like an internet person. No, <laughs> he's an actual person. I'm real. I'm real. You're not going to say anything nice to Adam? Just gonna... I used to bully him, you see, so... Yeah, yeah he did. I, I, I got away know. from Danny, now you bring him back in. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify, he does not kid that people. I used, to, I used to tell Adam what to do, and he used to yeah. hate it. He used to grit no, his I'd tell teeth. Danny what to do. It's, yeah, he does, actually. <laughs> <laughs> all hail King Adam. Yeah. Let's all let's all tell a story of the first time that we met Danny. Oh my god. <laughs> I've got a good story. Go on. The, the first day I met Danny, he he took me to Burger King and showed me how to get the best deal <laughs> out of the oh. deal from Burger King. <laughs> what was the best deal? I can't remember, I never got it again. Oh, you know what? It was um I think it was because they used to have deals on like Tuesday. I think it was so. If you got, the, <laughs> if you got the, like the Tuesday meal, it was like two pound or something like that. And it was like a rodeo, the rodeo burger with like the the, um, the onion rings in it or something, and uh, so, something like that. I'm making it up. It's over ten years ago, right? Bro, you and, don't um, even go near burger king anymore. <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> I was like, oh, the good old days. And then Paul, Paul was just watching me. It's like. Like, like, I like to be listened to, you know. And Paul was listening intently. I was like, I like this guy. Was, you know, he's not saying anything. In awe of this man who's who's saving his money. Paul, is that why I'm, the first day I met you, you took me to Subway? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just trying to be Danny, basically. It didn't, yeah, just didn't like, work. Carrying on the tradition. Just, just gave me back chat. <laughs> the first time I met Danny, we went to McDonald's and he got double everything. <laughs> Am I just meeting everybody? We went from Studio D over to the other side. <laughs> and along the way, we went to McDonald's and it was two burgers and, and, and two chips. And I believe that you even had two nugget boxes. I might be oh wrong my God. on that front. But you changed so much from that time. Double everything <laughs> to the way you were eating at the end. Right, you went from sinner to saint, boy. Hold on. Did... Now it's just, now it's just a, a bucket of porridge. That eats <laughs> a bucket. <laughs> I prefer a trough. <laughs> it just sounds like I was a fat guy. A fat yeah, guy. so that's how we know Danny. Yeah, it's just like man, you have lost a lot of weight though. You got really in shape. Yeah, thank you, mate. I'm still working. It's Getting beautiful. There. There's yeah. the compliment from Adam. Yeah, I'll, finally came. Yes. I'll take that. <laughs> used to be fat now. You're I right. think that's the first time Adam's ever said anything nice about anyone on the podcast, Danny. <laughs> I will, and in life, I will take it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So it's lovely having Danny here today. It is his choice of film that he's chosen. He's chosen for us to watch in time today. I'm very excited to talk about this film, uh, yeah. but I guess I guess first of all we should probably go to the staple of every episode, which is the quiz. Ben, do you want to take it away and tell us how it's going to go down this episode? 
It's literally been taken away from me this episode. It literally is. Because normally everyone knows I ask the boys two questions. If they get the, the questions right, they get a point. If they get it wrong, I get the point. Currently, I'm in the lead with 21 points. Paul is second with 19 points. And Adam is in third place with 17 points. But this week, I ain't asking the questions. Danny Boy is taking it. Danny, you are quiz master. How many questions you got for us today? Right. I'm, I'm going to... Uh, I will, you don't know yet. I won't, made up I won't the call you guys, right? I will come up with two questions, right? But it's going to be off the dome, yeah? It's going to be very <laughs> spontaneous. <laughs> yeah? That's how I want it to be. <laughs> See, I'm a very busy depends, man. <laughs> depends on how many questions he feels like. We could have six. <laughs> <laughs> right. This Okay, this is a decent one. I think, I think it's a decent one. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. All right. Are we allowed to just shout out the answer, yeah? Yes. Okay. Okay, first question. The, the character who played... What's his name? The rich guy. <laughs> the, the rich guy. <laughs> the, 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 the actual actor's name is Matt Boomer. Matt Boomer. Who, oh, Matt Bomber. Matt yeah, Bomber, yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who played... I can't remember his character's name. He played the rich guy. Um, what uh, Netflix show... It wasn't originally a Netflix show. Mad Men. TV no. series. That's not Matt oh, Bomber. Oh, shit. Was he? I haven't. Fuck. What is the name of the TV show that Matt Bomber was in, um, uh, which was just around the time I think, and I think it just, I think he was in it just before, just before he was in this film. It ran you, say for about, ne- you say it's Netflix original? No, it's not a Netflix original. I think it was but it's uh, on Netflix. It's on Netflix. I think it was like mm. HBO or CBS or something like that. Oh, fuck. Shit. It ran for about shit. four series. Uh, is it like suits or something? I don't know. It is similar in. Oh. You're you're burnt out, Paul. So that right, right, he leaves out the. I don't know, man. What you just said. What you just said is reference to, like, a part of that suit. If that makes sense. No, no, no clues for Adam now because Adam's the only <laughs> one who can answer now. Bro, I don't. I, I have no idea. I don't know what the hell is going on. I have with this no question. idea. Even with that clue, I, I just want to say. I was going to say American Horror Story. That's still running, mate. That's on like season 10 or something. I have no idea, Danny. I'm going to say American Horror Story. Incorrect. What was it? White Collar. White Collar. I would never have got that. (laughs) And it was a show where he plays an ex-felon. He's come out of prison. And he gets uh, employed by the FBI to help solve white collar crimes. It's a very good show. I, I really appreciate it. And that's why I was like, oh, look, that's Matt Bomber from White Collar. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> question, Danny. That, was that a good is one. a good question. I, pre- I was thinking Danny's, of something. Danny's on the scoreboard now and then, surely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Danny, you got a point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy about that. All right, I'll give you... I don't know if this will be easier. Well, we'll see. Um, name the film that Justin Timberlake was in alongside Mila Kunis. Friends with Benefits. Oh. See? See, one very hard, one very easy. Correct, Adam, did, did correct. I, did Adam get it? He did get oh. it. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that as well. I knew you were going to say that coming up. Like, when he said his name, the film, Justin Timberlake, it's the only film I could think of in my head. So I'm glad it was that. <laughs> I was going to shout out Social Network. I was just waiting Holy for that shit. actor. <laughs> I knew you'd say Social Network. So Adam's done, is the one who done us this week. Who done yeah. us. How does it feel, Adam? You finally scored some points again. All I'm going to say, Ben, is I've been up against you two weeks in a row now answering questions. And I've got two right and you've got none. If only you had that, that good knowledge when you uh, could have won the quiz first time, but it was actually Ben. Yeah. yeah. Then you could be in this position of power, boy. Uh, I like answering <laughs> the questions too much. That's why I bottle it every so often. <laughs> yeah. So, to wrap up the scoreboards then, that means I sit pretty still with 21 points. Paul is in second place with 19 and Adam is up one and one behind Paul on 18. It's making it tight towards yep. the end of the year. Ooh, it We've is. got two months to go and we are split by three points. It's exciting times. Adam was languishing, man. He's back. He's back in the party. It always happens. Right, so that takes us swiftly on to the main event. I'm very excited. Are we ready to talk about this film? Yes. In time. I'm 21 seconds to save the world. <laughs> Let's roll that theme tune. The main event. Here is our 
Future Topic Plus Adam might do a rubbish plot summary. Are you fucking serious? Right guys, today we are talking about In Time, the Justin Timberlake film. It is a spoiler episode, we're going straight to the spoilers, no, no hanging about. But first of all, Adam, you have to do a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Thank plot you. summary. Okay, so this film is basically set in the future, I think. Is it many, I don't know if it's maybe going to be set in the future, is it? Distant, not yes. too distant future though where basically money has been replaced by time. Everybody looks the same age. It's really weird. And um, yeah, so then time is now a currency. So you have a million years, you can live for a million years. But if you want to go out and spend money, you spend a year. And basically, Justin Timberlake is getting tracked down by Killian Murphy. And Killian Murphy's after his time. And I think Justin Timberlake's meant to be trying to break the system and the will of what it is and cause an uprising and take down capitalism through time. You think? Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't seen it, he's just guessing. <laughs> he's just been yeah. reading the Wikipedia plot summary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought that was a good Very one. Very well done. Good. Yeah, good one. Yeah. Right, seeing as it's your film, Danny, you get to decide what order you would like everyone to do their, their first impression. So this is a, a minute just chatting about your feelings about the film and your rating of the film. So whatever order you want, you can go first, you can go, you can sandwich in the middle of all of us or whatever order you want. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go alphabetical. I think that's just fairer. Um, so we'll go, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go Adam, Ben, Paul. You, you, you come right. before Paul. You should be third. You come before Paul. Oh, yeah. Paul. Well, well, am, I, am I jumping in there or do you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah, yeah you yeah, go on. Let's go alphabetical. Okay. Um, Adam, Ben, then me, then Paul. Paul, have fun. and what? All right. I'll carry on. Um, so this film was a weird one it has a very interesting plot like very interesting to see how suddenly you take time and put it with money even when you're watching the film you're like you actually question what you should spend your money on a bit more when you put it into time of your life rather than actual monetary value Mm -hmm. Um, but I have to say it wasn't very well executed this film It it had the interesting there but I don't think it delivered it. It's got a, it raises a lot of questions with society, let's say, and there is a message deep down inside of it. But yeah, it was not executed well. There was there were some poor bits. There were some okay bits, but overall, it it didn't really cut the mark of what it should be. It had the potential to be so much better than it would, but yeah, it just went for a bit cheesy and it went a bit too. I didn't even know what type of film it was trying to be. I think. Also, it had one of the worst shots I think I've ever seen in a film, but we'll talk about that later on. Um, I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> however, I am going to give this film a 5 out of 10. Danny, thank you for coming along and finally picking another film that Adam rags on. Because <laughs> so far, he's loved everything apart really? from my recommendation. And now he's gone. I know, you made yeah, me Jesus watch. Rolls. Jesus, that, was, was that, that was a joint thing. That was, that was just a... a uh, 2020 release yeah you've been picking good films so yeah 5 out of 10 alright you want me to spit the scene in the film which summarised my how I really felt about this whole film is this one when Justin Timberlake's mum is going on to the bus and she realises that the price of the ticket has gone up and she hasn't got the time to either make the bus journey or get home yeah instinctively I went how fucking stupid is that? Why would you let your time get so low? Just you. Why would you let your time get so low? Just work and have yeah. more time. And then I caught myself and I thought, oh shit! And that's what it wants you to think. Mm. It's it wants your gut reaction to do that. So you go, oh, just just work harder. You'll have more money. We know it ain't that fucking simple. Same shit. Time and money. It's the same shit. Just work a bit harder. You'll have the time. Just work a bit harder. You'll have the coin. Mm. We know it doesn't work like that. So I appreciated lots of moments throughout the film that were like that, but they outstayed their welcome after about half an hour. There were good scenes that told the wider story in that first half hour. And then Danny boy, I got a side with Adam. It dipped dramatically. It went on to some corny shit, (laughs) some corny, corny action stuff. And the worst thing was that it's, uh, Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried I haven't got a problem with either of them but I didn't I didn't believe him as the ghetto representative they keep <laughs> talking about how it is in the ghetto you're Justin Timberlake I can't buy it 
and just couldn't buy it. And so that was a problem for me. So I, I fell out of love with it once he was meant to be like the voice of, of the underrepresented or whatnot. I was like, no, no. And I didn't appreciate Amanda Seyfried being able to quickly switch and be on his side. I didn't like that either. Uh, it just felt a little too corny. And ultimately, it was privileged white people freeing up largely other white people <laughs> by the end. But I really like the film. And Danny, the thing is, just like, I don't know if you heard our District 9 episode we did with with some people a few episodes back. I love the idea. I think we're going to have a good discussion because of the idea behind the yeah. film. I don't think the film did it very well. And for that reason, I too am giving it a 5 out of 10. You just basically said what I said, but in a lot better way. <laughs> you, you it's always the way. <laughs> no, you set it up for me, mate. I knock them down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too nice of you. Like Justin, just freeing everyone. Well, sorry, Danny. No, I thought no, you just took no, two no. blows either side. No, no, no. You see, you see the thing about the thing about why I chose this film. It wasn't because I thought it's a fantastic film. Um, it's it's more of a discussion piece. Um, I thought the fi- the film itself. Um, I, I I I I agree with you guys in certain respects of it. Um, I thought it, it could have gone to so many different levels. There's so many, there's so many different levels yeah. that this film could have, could have hit. And if I'm honest, it, it's the type of film I'd, I'd want to see a remake of, um, some someone else to make it and make it Probably. into something quite serious, something that we because re- it's a more it's a thinking piece right now. Because I think you're right. I thought I thought it kind of tried to hit between sci-fi and action and it, it it kind of jumbled up a little bit and 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 nothing really felt that serious if that makes sense so mm. even even when people were dying it was quite comical it was um it, it it felt a bit like a like a like a like a tarantino film like not 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 mm. not, not 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 you know as grand as a tarantino but i mean the, the comic value that you would get from it but, it but it's almost like it wasn't supposed to be funny you know but you're laughing yeah. because you didn't think it was done that well like my guy with it, the the gangsters they um the hats and i was like who are these oh, guys man. these guys are these guys are the hard guys yeah okay <laughs> it's like in what universe is this <laughs> i'm looking at like, i'm like where are you guys like i don't know where, I, I don't know where they're hard men but it's in this time um i agree in terms of like you know, privileged white guys talking about the ghetto. It's like, it just didn't feel right coming out of Justin Timberlake's mouth. It's like, yeah, we don't treat mm. this way in the ghetto. And it's like, this feels wrong. It's, it's just, it's just a <laughs> yeah. little bit, it's a little bit like, hmm. It's like, people really live like this? People live like what? Like, you've seen no violence. Nothing's gone on. I just see a lot of, <laughs> yeah, Exactly. <laughs> I, just, I just see a lot of people in, in overalls, like, walking briskly to work. <laughs> <laughs> People missing the bus on a day to day, it's bad times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh the price has gone up, oh my god. And um <laughs> there was more the the concept of the film I thought was amazing. I thought it's brilliant. I and, and I mean that in the respect of um when we talk about when we talk about time as a currency, because in the real world it is, but we don't we don't see it as that because we've replaced we we've replaced our time with currency. So whereas there mm. they've replaced currency with time and that and that's almost like the real world, the real world being that we give over our time for money in the real world. You do your eight hours a day yeah. for money. You do it for like 300 pound, mm. 400 pound, whatever it is, lower or higher. But but we trade it. It's like, is my eight hours worth 300 pounds? You know, is my eight hours worth 200 pounds? And and when you really mm. break it down, you probably you'd probably say no. You'd probably say, I could do a lot more with my time in eight hours than make two hundred pounds. You know what 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 is that yeah. to me? And um, and uh, I mean we'll de- we'll, de- we'll delve into it a little bit deeper. But um, but if if uh, for my rating for this film, um, um, I gave it a six out of ten. Um, like I said, I didn't ex- I didn't think it was the greatest film in the world, but it's more about the concept, and I could watch it over and over again yeah. because of the concept, and it because it's a it's a it's a thinking piece, you know. It makes you it, mm. it makes you think about life. Uh, execution wise, um, like Adam said, it's just like it's very sketchy in places, and and it could have been a great film, um, but but the execution is quite comical and. 
um, a, li- yeah. a little bit all over the place where where you're not sure whether to laugh or or cry in a sense. So yeah. so um, so I give it a six. I'm glad you give it six because it makes me feel better as well. Because I, I thought <laughs> Danny's <laughs> taking his leave of his senses, man. <laughs> I was hoping this wasn't going to be a nine or ten. <laughs> I give it a ten out of ten. I love this film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you guys are saying. <laughs> right, shall I roll Point with board. mine? Okay. Yep. So I totally agree. At the heart of it, it's, in time, it is like a fantastic idea, but it's like it's just packaged completely wrong. Just just like um, the industry of its lead actor, it all just feels like a pop music video. Yeah. It's like you think in a, in a world where everyone is living day by day, that everything will all feel a bit more chaotic and grimy and dirty but everyone's beautiful the world feels clean and like the the time device on everyone's wrist it, it, it it's like too clean cut and it goes like the sleekness in that world and it just it just ends up feeling like a little bit cheap it doesn't feel like a gritty kind of tale about using your using your time as a currency like i, I think mm. you've done so much better um i also don't really appreciate the introduction of the rich girl because I don't think it's a story arc that I really care to see. It's like the fil- it's, the story arc was the filthy rich feeling sorry for the poor community. And that's just a bit of a nothingness to me, really. Um, uh, I, I don't really like the fact that there's no origin for this timekeeping device on everyone's wrist. Like, how did it get there? Like, which they just wrote off immediately at the beginning of the film, just saying something like, um, it doesn't matter how it started. This is just what it is. <laughs> Right, but but like it doesn't matter because like do they do they just have them as a baby? Do they insert them into you as a baby? Like what what is it? I just don't. I want to know why this is happening and why everyone's just going along with it. And um, but ultimately, the bank robbing scene is where the, the movie really fucked up. But we will get into that. But anyway, the discussion surrounding this film will evidently be better than the actual film itself. I'm sure, and my score is also a five out of ten. Okay. Danny, you united the film busters. <laughs> Has that ever happened before? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I, cho- I chose this film um, not because I'm in love with it. It was m- it's more because I... The, the concept of the film... It's like you, could, you almost want to make the film again yourself, you know? Mm. Because I felt like it could have been darker. I felt like... Definitely could, darker. Definitely. You know, I, it, it was... It was uh, it was a, you know, what it reminded me of. It reminded me of like Marvel films back in the day. You know, when they weren't that serious, and yeah. and and you you get your um, Toby Maguire's kissing girls, and it's just and dancing, and it's it's a bit it's a bit cringe, you know. But yeah, and yeah. but they're trying to be sort of halfway trying to be serious. It felt it felt a little bit like that. Like they didn't go the full hog, the full the full way. It's like they couldn't they didn't go far enough in one direction or the other. They kind of stuck in the middle lane, and and. And that's why, and I, I think that's why I wouldn't call it a flop, but why it wouldn't have done as well as I thought it could have. Um, that's what's annoying about it as well, because there's a good film in there. There's an idea for a good film there, yeah. And they could do so much with it, and they just didn't. And it kind of that's what kind of makes you disinterested in the film after a while. It's like why, you, like you could have done so much more with this. So that actually makes you less interested in the film because, like, even if it was going to be okay, it's just not done a good job of it. But the thing that was disappointing is the guy who who made it did like Gattaca, Truman Show, The yeah. Terminal, and like these are pretty good fucking films. Like The Truman Show, my god, come on! And and Gattaca is a proper like sci-fi that is dealing with some issues, and he did it properly in those. But it's like what fell apart here. I get the impression that he had this script and he took it to a studio, and the studio said, "Yeah, really like it." We're going to get Justin Timberlake to play the lead, and the guy was like, oh, mm-hmm. "What? What? No, no, no! That's not what I'm trying to do." Yeah, yeah. And Amanda Seyfried is going to be the girl in it, and he was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, "No, I'm not making it for the MTV generation." Yes, you are. Mm. And it's and, uh, and then that's interject a love story yeah. into it as well. Yeah, out of fucking nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not earned at all. No, it was just no. clunky, 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 man. Mm. Yeah, this girl. She she was in. The minute she saw him, she was interested in him, and it just didn't make any. It was like it made no was, sense. It's like a little bit of puppy love. It's like, oh, I saw a guy. He doesn't look like he's from around here, but but she showed no real interest in it in him. No. You know, and what I didn't understand about her was was what her like, 
what her reasoning behind everything was, why she wanted to like not be rich anymore. Because her reasoning was, she said, I've got the quote here, do I really want to spend my time trying not to die by mistake? Mm. Mm. What does that mean? What are you trying to say? Because she's got so much time. I like This is the one of the very few things that I thought was interesting. Because she has so much time, she doesn't do anything with it because she's scared that she may live life dangerously and lose it all. So she doesn't take no yeah, chances yeah. or gambles. Hence her saying silly, she wouldn't silly. get in a car and drive. Yeah. She wouldn't get in the ocean and watch it. It's just about having things that are beautiful to look at but not experiencing them. Like people who spend shitloads for like pieces of art and put it on the, on the wall and then that that's it that don't really appreciate it like it's wasted on them i don't think that's how people live their lives with loads of money though i feel like people live their lives to the full they might it might be a hollow life because they're like it's all about money but they're still going to do exactly what they want yeah but then but then isn't that isn't that the isn't that the point because when you flip time and money around it's almost like it's almost like you do the opposite where where in our real world you spend, if you make a lot of money, you want to be able to spend it and live life. Whereas in their world, they have a lot of time, but they don't spend it because, because they're afraid, because it's, it's almost infinite. Like they can have it almost infinite. So it's like, well, I don't want to die. And it's weird because it's like, I don't want to die not having done anything, but at the same time, I don't want to die. So it's kind of, Mm. there's a, there's, it's like, well, are you living though? Are you actually living? It it doesn't. What yeah. the con the concept of them in what is it? Um, uh, they call it New Greenwich, New Greenwich, which I thought New was. New Greenwich, yeah. yeah. I was like, I was like to T. Um, oh, I was like, oh, I like Greenwich Mean Time, so they're changing the times around. That's how I was seeing it because they're talking about. Oh times. shit, maybe, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I was like, why are they calling maybe, it New Greenwich? Yeah. I was like. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, there's a New York, there might, it might have been a New York reference with the Greenwich, but I was like, Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, no, you're onto Most it. Of, That's got to be what it yeah, is. That makes sense. Do you reckon they've really thought that deep in this film, though, after a while? <laughs> 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 there's no, I, can't, I can't think of any other reason why they would call yeah. it that. But it's kind of like, No, that makes sense. People, it's like the whole bit when she was standing on the beach, wasn't it? And he was like, you got this in your backyard and you don't go run in the sea. But yeah, like, but that's it, right? It's like, say, super rich yeah. people who have swimming pools and shit, they probably don't use them that much. They probably go in them once or twice a year. And people who don't, have, have not, who go around and visit, would be like, how the fuck are you not in this all the time? Yeah. You just take it for granted. It's true. Yeah. I, I, think, I, think, I think you hit the nail on the head. Sometimes people, if you have it in your back garden, the likelihood is, you're, just, like, just like people living in big cities like London yeah. or New York... And when tourists come, they want to do everything. But if you live there, you're like, I'll do it another day. You know, I live here. It's whatever. And then you die never having done it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it can be kind of said to, they're not appreciating it. That's more. Yeah. Where yeah. people would appreciate it. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but it could also be time as well. Like, generally speaking, it's true. If you know you've got a month somewhere, if you're on holiday... And you've got two weeks. You go on a two-week holiday. Beginning of the holiday, you're like, oh, we get to that eventually. We get to that eventually. And then it gets to the final day or two days of that holiday. And you're like, oh, shit, we've got to do it now. We've only got this amount of time. At the beginning, it feels like it's you've got plenty. And then as shit yeah. ticks down, you realise you haven't. And then you've got yeah. to start prioritising. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense, yeah. What I really didn't appreciate was how, as you say, it could have gone a lot darker and gone a lot more into, like, this idea of having time as a currency and Justin Timberlake going, I'm going to take down the system. And then that was what he said going into Greenwich. And then he was like, yeah, I'm just going to do some gambling. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and why yeah. are you doing this? He just comes off like a dickhead. It's like, why are you going to the casino and gambling? No, you're not teaching anyone a lesson there, really. <laughs> you know what? You know what? It was, it, he was, um, I thought he was, uh, his, his morning period was, was rushed. You know, it his, his mum just sure. died. He was angry. He's gone That's there. And then it's kind of like, well, you, you're making a crusade out of taking taking the system down now because your mum just passed? I thought he was going to fuck her at first. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's where they were going with it. They were dancing. <laughs> hey, when they started dancing, I thought, no, no, no. Come on now. This makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> they made... They, that did, you, did you hear... Yeah, they... They emphasized it when, when they first saw her. It's like, da-da-da. and he's like, mum. And everyone's like, oh, yeah. mum, oh my God, this <laughs> <Yeah>. film is. 
but it overemphasizes it's like okay everyone's trying to be 25 in this film okay she's never she never looks 25 i don't care what anybody says she looks like she's about 35 i'm just yeah, saying yeah, she, yeah. she does yeah it was olivia wilde wasn't it yeah i don't know oh, yeah, who yeah, olivia yeah. Wilde is. sorry yeah 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 see that whole setup with um her death like it was kind of brutal that she just like runs and dies but that but was some corny just, scene man yeah, but the setup was just wrong. It was like they could have found a better way to do it because cause it's more like, are you stupid enough to get yourself in this situation where you've just paid a bill and then you have like just amount, you've got to hope that Justin Timberlake's <laughs> home and not late by half an hour. Yeah. But that's I mean, what I think. I, I did think fine. that. That's what made me think it was stupid. But then at the same time, I was like, okay, maybe this is why the film is working because actually. That is the dismissive attitude so many people have to people who... It, it's easy for anyone who has an abundance of something or more of something than someone else to go, why don't you just do this? So, like, for us to go, oh, how could you let your clock run down? I think the problem is the film didn't do enough to show how, like, impoverished or poor in terms of time they were. Because they still seem to live in a nice apartment, from what I remember. So it felt unrealistic that she would have been so poor in time do you know what i mean mm, mm. yeah that I, I the bit i didn't like though was the fact that she like fair enough she got herself in that situation but she like looks so happy to pay her debt it's like i feel like there should have been some kind of like depression like oh my god i'm in this situation i gotta get home really quickly mm. no she was just smiling oh let me just go get on the bus now got an hour and a half left to live yeah let's get on the bus <laughs> I don't know, yeah, I suppose you would be more clocked into that sort of shit if you knew life or death depended on it. But the thing, that you, Adam, you know when you said in your summary there was one shot in particular that you hated or something? Isn't it yes. this one? Is it the bit with the car? I knew you was going to see the car. No, yeah, the car. When, that what, car where, when it crashes, <laughs> yeah, that was bad. <laughs> when it comes off that road, man, like, <laughs> nah, it looks like someone's just thrown like a sculpture car straight, like, this <laughs> shit CGI. I was like, come on, you can do and so And they're in a convertible, better, and they just survive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It looked like, like a homage on, to, to, to films from the, I don't know what, what, what generation that would have been. It was like some cheap Bond film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it reminded me of, like, Thunderbirds or something. I was like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you know what, though? Her, um, it's like, oh, it's a two-hour walk from here. And uh, the bus driver was like, oh, you better get, <laughs> you better get, <laughs> you better get trotting. I was like, hold on a second, a two Beat hour walk, right? And I was like, she's sprinting, yeah? <laughs> I was like, how did they catch each other? <laughs> I was like, she's sprinting the whole way. <laughs> I was kidding myself. I was like, mate, you, you should have loads of money, man. You're the track and field star of the century. <laughs> <laughs> loads of time. <laughs> It had up. all that good stuff up to the point where his mum died. I think it kind of had the potential to do well. But yeah. yeah, like as soon as he just bounced out of town and dropped into that casino and Amanda Seyfried came into it, the film just changed into like a very foolish, very foolish action film. And how many puns did they want to make about time? They kept referencing, oh, I've just got, no I've got nothing but time on my hands. I just don't <laughs> have the time yeah. for that. It's time for this. So like, stop. We get the message. We know you fucking called the film in time. Stop making <laughs> references to time now. We get it. And the, the bit that I hated as well was so cringe. Was when um he's he goes to the restaurant, and then what does he say? He says, she says, <laughs> you do everything too fast. I can tell you're not that kind of person. He goes. Not everything. <laughs> it's like, stop Aww. it, you fucking cringe person. I was like, yeah, you know when he did right. that? I was like, didn't your mum just die like yesterday? And you did. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot it real quick. <laughs> You're supposed to be taking down the system right now, yeah? <laughs> you got time for pussy. There were so many poor moments. <laughs> there was. It was all stuff like that. Cr cringy little comments that he made. Like... Dancing after buying the car with her, there was just too. There was too much nonsense. It was. I just like. I kept going. No, no, no. In my head, because it was like I'm not buying any of this. All your slick talk. I don't like yeah. it. But fuck all that. Fuck the. Fuck the specifics about that shit. We all know that it's a bad film. We've all said as much. Let's get into that. Them themes. 
Let me tell you one more bad thing. Sorry, just one more thing stuck in, in my craw. And I was like, why have you done this? You know the man from Big Bang Theory? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Johnny so, That was stupid. Yeah. I mean, it was stupid that, like, he just, it's right, he got all these years, he drank himself to death. That wasn't the bit that made me think, that's just cringe the way you've handled it. It's the moment when Timberlake returns to town to see him, and uh, we find out that he's got a black wife or black girlfriend, mm-hmm. and everyone just, the scene stops for a second as soon as she reveals herself, like, see what we're doing here? He's with a black <laughs> woman. And I thought, how fucking patronise him, man. He's got, look, look, I don't know if you saw what we've done with the film here, but we're being a bit progressive. <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't buy that shit. There was no subtlety. Let's make her black just because. If you rewatch it, I swear, rewatch it. Everyone in the scene just pauses for a second. Just it's like just so the audience can go, oh right, yeah, black woman, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is a liberal film. Okay. <laughs> oh, I've I have another thing before we move on to the serious stuff. Let's just talk about the whole bank scene because which has ruined the whole film. It just came out of nowhere that they decide to rob some banks and they just smash through the front of a bank and the vault was just open. <laughs> yeah. Right. And yeah. they're just stealing all the money and then it goes on the news and it says. They've just robbed the bank. Sixth time this week. Yeah. It's like, what? You're letting these people that... six times you fall for it. Also, that CCTV camera was just exactly the same footage as they've used to shoot this scene. They didn't even try and like do a new angle. <laughs> like Terrible shit. And that is a, that's how they end the film. They're just going to rob banks forever. I know. I, that was so anticlimactic. It's like, I don't even yeah. understand what building you're walking into, really. What significance <laughs> this building has. It was just the fact It's just the fact that it was really big. So they're going to have loads of time. And <laughs> that's what I think what it was. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> if this hadn't have been Timberlake, I don't know how it would have gone down. Maybe it would have seemed better. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, I, well, it depends if it had all the cringe still in it. I don't think it would have worked. I don't think they could have done as much cringe if it wasn't Timberlake. What do you think of Killian Murphy? I thought it was alright. He was his Killian boring Murphy. self from back in the day. Not that I'm saying he's boring, but you know back in the day when he was like Scarecrow and Batman and he was just taking anything he could to try and crack America. He was bland. Mm. He was just bland. Put him Can up you, against yeah. Peaky Blinders, man. I but, think I just like Killian Murphy. Yeah. yeah I, I, I love <laughs> Killian Murphy. I, I do, but that, that was a bland performance. Killian, Killian Murphy, because well, he's first of all he's one of my favorite actors. So so if 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 he's in it, it's like it's worth a watch for me. But it's kind of like I agree his 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 performance in it. It's it's not it's not a highlight performance if you know what I mean. It it was quite it was, he was quite good in a the, bad bunch. Yeah, it didn't it didn't. It, I I thought he couldn't he couldn't. He's it's like George Clooney in Batman. It's like let me not put this on my CV. It's not that serious, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I he, he's he's like it's like it was a it was almost like it's just a paycheck, and and it's kind of like because I don't think he would ever do a film of that kind of caliber now with his it, it, no. with his no. with his status. Yeah, he's done his shit. He's done his time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. Very good. <laughs> Yeah. I've got a, I've got a good segue into talk about the serious shit. What do you think the moral of this story, like how it ended? What do you think they're trying to say? How the fact that oh nobody's working anymore, they're all just crossing over into different borders. What's the message? But they don't get it because it, it, the, the system's just going to crash. You get the fact that everyone's now got the same money, then they'll just up the time. Here comes capitalist really, Adam. It, yeah, it's just like they just do the same shit again. It just doesn't matter what you do. But that's what I'm saying. That seems like that's the message. They're trying to say, no, because people have got to be held down in this life. Otherwise, everyone's just going to do what they want and there's, it's all going to get fucked. That's felt like that was the message of this film. Yeah, because they didn't really break the wheel. They just gave everyone time, which doesn't fix anything. Yeah, it's kind of like if somebody robs a bank and gives all the bank's money to everybody. I mean, there's a reason that, you know, not everybody's got a million pounds in their banks yeah. because people don't know how to use money. They don't, they don't mm. spend it wisely. So well, they did in Zimbabwe, innit? They just gave everyone loads of money and now Kit Kat costs like twenty thousand pounds. <laughs> like, just inflation, bro, that's what happens. It's like it, it what what I think who who was it? Um uh, I can't remember who said 
in the film. Um, it's like, of course, um, some people have the, the the rich guy said it. Where would, um, um, people can live forever? Where would, where would we put them? Not everyone can live forever. Where would we put them all? It's like to yeah. to was it for for a few to be immortal, many must die or something like that. I think was the quote. Um, mm. And and who said that? The guy who committed suicide. Yeah, that was. A, I think it was him. Was yeah. that? I thought it was the mad madman guy. The like the big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must have been because the Thanks, suicide man. guy did a quote that I didn't like. He, it was kind of like we, we, the whole because we you 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 frame it back into the real world, and you know rich rich people, very wealthy people. It's it's kind of like because they're they're kind they're the ones that are effectively running running the world on your one percenters um, and yeah. kind of dictating how how we live our lives. And it's only a few, and it's only the few that have managed to get to that level. Now it's like okay, we need to dictate this and we need to dictate that because because everyone can't be on the same level it's like it's like uh um uh oh, what's my, what goes on in russia um uh, <laughs> communism, communism. <laughs> um mm. every every everyone can't be on the same level because they just can't and it's it's kind of like you look at people in society and you say we we do not all deserve the same amount of everything everybody has the same opportunity but we don't all deserve it you know what i'm saying as in we yeah. all deserve <laughs> to have the same um, appreciation of, or value of life and everything. But, but there gets to a point in the individual's life where you do not deserve to be in the same position that I am in because I have worked for it, for example. Are like, you saying this or are you saying the film is saying this? I'm saying both because they, 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 they I felt like the film tried to, to balance it, it was it was a little bit more one sided towards towards the Justin Timberlake side, where it's like everyone deserves a bit of time. But 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 then when you look at the rich people, I don't think they gave them enough time of day when it came to to saying this is why the system is the way it is. Yes, um, because because it is unfair. But at the same time, you have to un- you have to you have to understand if everybody had the same amount of well, their currency being time. What would happen? What would happen in that reality? Would things be fair? Somebody's always, there's always going to be a hierarchy. The there's always mm. going to be people trying to get to the top, people being pushed down to the bottom and people in the middle not knowing what they're doing. And you, 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 you have the haves and you have the have nots. Everybody has the ability to have, but not everyone deserves the, the ability to have as much as someone else. But then who determines who, this is where it, get, this is where it gets complex though. Who determines it? Because the have-nots are going to say, well, we we deserve what you've got. And the haves are going to say, no, 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 we've done this to deserve it. And then it becomes about, well, what? how do you determine who deserves it? Is it working hard? We know the people who have haven't necessarily fucking worked hard to get it. Yeah, he did. He didn't break the system. He just made everyone forget for like half an hour. I think he created a bit of anarchy. But yeah, mm. he didn't break the system. It's, no. It's, it's, that's what, that's what he's, he already said. The bank, the guy right, had all the money. He already said it's not going to last. Yeah. It's like you can do it. It's just going to go back to the status quo. Yeah, yeah. Because people would just spend all that time because stuff they have to spend money on something or spend time on something, and yeah. then it will get depleted because where they're going to get the rest of the money from? I think they they could they kind of they kind of showed elements of what could happen with um, with Johnny Galecki's character, um, his best friend, because. It's like, right, I've given you 10 years, right? You didn't have anything. Now I've given you this. It's kind of like, you know, when, when you see rappers and all that and then they give their friends a little piece of money and then their friends blow it and then they come back to them for more money. It's like, you were never meant for this money. Just like, yeah. just like his friend was never meant for this time. I gave you 10 million and you decided yeah. to drink yourself into the grave, leaving behind a wife and a child. It's like, you had everything, but, but, yeah. but it's the mentality, the mentality to handle that kind of responsibility and pressure wasn't there. He, 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 even though he had it now, he had the answers he was looking for and, but his, his mind wasn't ready for it. He, he couldn't. It's it, the accumulation of money. If you gave me a hundred million today, would I go crazy? I think we probably all would. You go a bit <laughs> crazy. Yeah, but then you've got guys who have a hundred million, and it's nothing to them. They invest it. They 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 go about their daily lives because they're used to it because they built up to it. You yeah, know? yeah, mm. yeah. When it's dumped on you, that's why lottery winners struggle so much because they're not used to it, and suddenly they've got it and they don't know how to handle it. It's, I think it's one thing to be realistic and another thing to be optimistic um mm-hmm. we all we all want to be optimistic that 
given the opportunity, we'll all treat each other with love and respect and kindness and fairness. But in reality, that doesn't happen. Um, There's always one person. This is, and and it's like you can you can you can have rotten rotten apples just spoiling the whole bunch. And and what what happens is, I think in society a lot people don't think for themselves. I think we've got we've got a very um, a very group think mentality, and and when that happens, you take away the ability to think as an individual. And the minute you do that. You start thinking like you think everybody else thinks they're thinking, right? So everybody thinks they want money and they think they want a big house and they think they want a fast car and they think they want to go on the, all these holidays and this and the other. But it's like, do you as an individual actually want that? Because yeah. I think what we all want, I think everybody, I, I feel like everybody wants peace and everybody wants to be happy, but not everybody knows how to do that for themselves. So we tend to follow a kind of status quo of what society says is happiness. So, like, when you've got the ghetto in the film, um, they think in New Greenwich, that's the life, you know? So, um, I finally made up enough time, Justin Timberlake's character would say, to to um, to take my mum to New Greenwich. And it's mm. like, because he doesn't know any better. He's never been there. So, he doesn't know what it's actually like. So when he actually does go there, it's like he's criticizing the way that they're living. But it's like, but you wanted to come here two minutes ago, you know. You yeah. thought at yeah. least you thought you did, you know. And then mm-hmm. you've actually seen the life, and you've seen it's not actually all it's cracked up to be. I don't know where I want to go now. Maybe you need time to think about that. Maybe you need time to think about what it is that you actually want from life. Because when it when we when we when we substitute money for time, uh, and then we flip it like this film does and 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 we we substitute our time ourselves for time you you know what i'm trying to say yeah yeah you you mm-hmm. you i feel i feel like we you, you, we who are watching the film start to understand and i think have a deeper development of how we spend our times in our real lives you know and and how and how we and how we perceive it because if 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 i if i don't value my time um in in my day to day life then then how can i complain to anybody about my my circumstances in life if i'm not valuing the the what's supposedly the most precious thing to us how how can i say oh life is unfair you know i don't have all this money it's like what what did you do to to earn it did you use your time to get that I'm building mm. a business right now. I'm spending a lot of time developing that business, you know. But mm. if it if, if and in five years' time, I'm a millionaire, right? And then someone's like, "Oh, that's unfair." It's like, how do you know? You have mm. no idea how much time I've invested in doing what I'm doing. So, mm. so, so when so when people see like overnight successes in in celebrities or whoever else they've just heard of them and it's like they've gone platinum and blah 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 they've made this film it's like you've, you've got no idea what they've done and how they've developed their time to get to where they are in life you don't know all the all the little short films and the indie films and the and the uni films that they did before they broke onto yeah. the big set on just sacrifices um, in life as well like not doing stuff that you want to do just because you've got to commit to it yeah I think we should have just let Danny do this whole fucking podcast. I could listen to the man talk for the whole hour. I know, so could I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having loads of fun, mate. <laughs> That's interesting what you're, you are saying, and it is, it is very true. And it does kind of fly in the face of the logic of this film. It does fly in the face of the logic of this film, what you're yeah. saying. What you're saying is true, but the film wasn't saying that, right? Was it? it tried to, but it didn't do a very good job of it. It was not. If it tried to, it definitely didn't do a good job because it just it was made... in there somewhere, but it weren't great. You know what I mean? what the only did... time I questioned it was when he bought the car. When we bought the car, and he was like, "Oh, that's fifty nine years," and you're like, in your head, mm. you're like, "That's not worth fifty nine years." You've got because when he was doing it, I was like, "He's got a hundred years," and I'm trying to calculate how much he spent to get there, and he gave his mate that, and yeah. he's like, "Right, you don't have much left now." Like, but then he didn't. He get like. He got something ridiculous when he went gambling, though. So he already had shit. He got like a thousand years. Yeah, it was like a thousand years, yeah. yeah. So, but it's also like, some people work up to like, have it for the money for the car and then they spend all that money on that car and you wouldn't question it. But it's like, second that someone spends all their life, like their time on that car, you're like, 
why are you doing mm. that? Like, you're so short now. It was, it, well, yeah, and the, and the guy was like, oh, where would you like it uh, delivered? Delivered for what? For display. And he's like, display it? I want to drive it. It's like, mm, yeah. you know, I want to live. I want to live. I want to live the time that Get I just spent. Get your money's worth out of it. Exactly. Get your time's worth out of it, even. And then he was involved in the worst car crash in <laughs> cinema history. <laughs> scale. That was a scale trick crash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, now. But really, if you're if you look at it like in the mindset of what you're saying, Justin Timberlake is that kind of person who's going out and just splashing his money. He goes there, go gambling, goes and buys a new car. It's like you're not doing anything to contribute to your life right now. You're just spending your money, spending your years. What are you actually doing? Mm. And then he just decides to rob some banks. It's like he's not actually trying to make the world a better place. Apart from when he gives the money away at the end. Yeah, like if if this film was going to give a real message that people could take away it should have been like you were saying adam break break the wheel break the system and say it's not about giving everyone this fucking time we need to change it money doesn't money is our own construct we constructed that Mm -hmm. over centuries we should do away with that and i'm not saying go back to like bartering and just swapping what i've got for someone else but a system where the only fair system is a system where everyone's in the game with the same fucking rules from the off and the only way Mm -hmm. to do that is to reset we're too far down the line to reset. The best way, the best film that showed resetting, even on a small scale, was the end of Fight Club when he brings down the five big fucking banks because oh, it yeah. would it yeah. reset everyone's fucking debt to zero. Oh, that yeah. did something, and it was action. It took some real action rather than an artificial surface bit of action, like let me redistribute this for a short time. Let's go for the fucking top, where the, mm-hmm. where the corruption actually stems from. But, yeah. but, is it, but does it stem from there? Is the real question because because people think it? I feel like people think it stems from there, but I don't think it stems from there. It stem. I feel like it stem. It stems from inside us because I think mindset. Yeah, I think I think we have an innate uh, kind of uh, want or need to. It's it first for survival and then to thrive. So so your basic instincts are to survive. Your food, your water, um, and your shelter. Once that once those things are covered. It's like, right, what's what's next? Now it's to thrive. Now it's to actually live life. Cause even if you took down, like like in like at the end of Fight Club, or even kind of like this film where where they, you know, sent off a million years, I think it was like a million years or something like that, um, to, to the ghetto, so that it kind of it just delayed the system. The yeah. mindset of the people is it's an ideology. It's an ideology, just like terrorism is an ideology. When people talk about like Islamic terrorism. It's like you can kill the terrorist, but but you can't defeat an ideology that someone believes, right? Mm. You it, it it it's 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 a feeling, it's it's energy, you know. So where one person fails, another will will attempt because the ideology the ideology is the same. Just the same way we as a society we worship money. People worship money, and they worship people who have it, right? And they yeah. don't think they do, but they do. Right, we we do it every day with our consumerism, and we do it every day with with our celebrities. And it's like, oh, you've got a million. I I need to follow you. I need to I need to learn from you because I mm. want that too. And that's the problem right there. When you just start saying I want that too, well, then the the ideology and the mindset is 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 possibly what the poison is because no rich person, the rich person or the person with all the time in the film can't tell you you. You're allowing somebody to tell you how to di- how to live your life, and you've got a problem with that. And then, so you're thinking the the solution to it is to have what he has, but but to have what he has, you've got to do what he does, mm. you know, and you've got to find it within yourself. Yeah, and then to do what he does might be sinister, and then and then it's just a continuation. You could wipe off everybody and and set them all at zero, but somebody's gonna come up with that ideology again at some point. Mm-hmm. So and then and then you just and then you're just repeating the cycle. I I feel like they I I feel like they would just be repeating the cycle. And I thought what well, they showed elements of that when, like um you remember in in the scene when um Minutemen the Minutemen were going off uh they were about to rob one guy who they clearly robbed before and he was like oh yeah yeah I've got enough because um some of the time had been distributed after they'd um they'd gone to rob the banks and everything and he's like mm-hmm. yeah um I managed to. Uh, buy myself a gun 
right? And he pulls it out on the Minutemen, yeah. and then the Minutemen drive off. Is like, right? So you, right there, rather than you know keeping with the status quo of giving them over your your time because you know they're Minutemen and that's what they do—they rob and they steal. Um, I got me a gun to protect myself from from the likes of you, mm. um, kind of perpetuating this cycle of violence that that he lives in, and then they you know, counteracted, it was like, and they came back and they shot him. And that's, it cut, that's it, yeah. You know, and it's just like, well, if, if if it wasn't him killing him, it might have been him killing him. And it's like, who chooses? Who chooses? They chose. Yeah. You know, they didn't come together and think, right, how are we going to bind our time together? They could have, in the ghetto, let's be honest, right? In the ghetto, everybody has a little piece of time, right? If they if they really wanted to work together, they could have all band together, um, said, right, we're going to choose one or two of you, right? We're going to give you lot like 50% of all of our time, right? And we trust you. We want you to go to, you know, we want you to go to New Greenwich and just cripple, potentially cripple the system, whatever it is, right? And then you're going to have to come back and distribute it, right? Yeah. But that would have been teamwork. They would yes. have to work together and they would have had to trust these guys because time is of the essence here, right? So they would have had to come back and then been like, right, guys, got a million, uh, managed to get a million years on our arms. Let's, let's distribute this all together and we can live in this community happy. So right? already what you just said would have been a better film than what this was. If yeah. they had banded together and put their faith in two people to go and do that, that's a story. That's got yeah. stakes in it. That's, that's something wanted, that means I wanted, something. I wanted to see the little people not go running around with a rich girl. Yeah. And feel sorry yeah. for you. Yeah. Because that would have been, Danny's story would have been a story about community, whereas this story is about Timberlake and like being a Robin Hood type figure. Robin Hood, mm-hmm. yeah. Also, yeah. the, the storyline that they're going to do changed about three times in the film. Yeah, so yeah. Those yeah. are little mini missions that he's like, I've done this bit and I've moved to this bit. Yeah, he didn't know where it really wanted to go. And then that's when it was like, this just go rob a bank now. It's yeah. like, what are you doing now? Yeah. Yeah. They just didn't know. They tried to do everything and ended up doing nothing right or, yeah. or yes. well, you know? That's it. That's it. Do you know who I would I, do you know who I would have liked to see? Like I would have liked to actually see like Killian Murphy play the lead role and then mm. you know, yeah, almost just... influence a darker side of it, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He gets he kind of like projects that kind of Serious, darker kind of tone than Justin Timberlake. Yeah, you just it just feels too light hearted. It's too light hearted, and every reference to the ghetto, I'm like, you're taking me further and further out of the film because I know this where this motherfucker lives and how mm. he lives. Yeah, you know. So what? you keep saying it, but I'm not with you on that. I want to see a. I want to see a an in time. Peaky Blinders type of uh, scenario. That would be nice. <laughs> he's running around Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, I would have loved to see. It's like, oh, he's robbing us. <laughs> All right, so here's a question. There's no more, you can't earn no more time. And each of you has, uh, what shall we say? You have five years worth of time. And based on the film's logic about the fact that you don't just wait five years, you have to spend that time as well. What do you do with your five years? How long do you actually live? Do, do you live for a year and spend on four years worth of stuff? Or do you live for five years and spend very little? And what do you spend on? I don't know, you've got to find a medium that works for you, surely. Like, Yeah, that's what I'm asking you, motherfucker. What's your medium? Like, what, like, if it's only five years, then you're just I'm just going away and living on a tropical island and do what the fuck I want because I know that I've, I've only got a limited amount of time I know but then you've got okay so you get to that tropical island and then you've got a day yeah so do you go to tropical island and live there for a week in luxury or stay and live somewhere else for three years yeah I don't know man There's, that's a deep question that you need more well uh, is it because, because yeah, when, like, when, you've got to work out how much you ne- actually need to live that's what you do you work out how much you need to live but then f- off the bat you don't know what that is straight away yeah, but basically, I'm asking you what's important to you. What, so when what, you get your paycheck at the beginning of the month, it's like you know now to break down your paycheck. But when you first got your paycheck, you didn't know how to break it down and what you needed to save and what you needed to do. If it takes time to work that out, like you'll be the same with that amount of time. That's what it is. It's like a paycheck. But is it because if you get that big one big paycheck? You don't know how to break it down, do you? You don't know exactly what you need yet. Like it changes from time to time as well. But we live. But we live in a in a in a world where 
all of us are doing that all the time. When when you yeah. wake up every day, no, tomorrow isn't promised, right? And we will say, or oh, well, some people will say, you know, live for today because tomorrow isn't promised and seize the day and blah, blah, blah. If, if today was your last day on earth, what would you do? It's like, because we don't believe that it's going to be our last day. We don't, we don't live. Yeah, you don't the, believe that's going to be your last paycheck and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't live. Like, we, let's say today, right now, right? I'm like, right. I don't know if tomorrow's promise. So what am I going to do right now? What would I do right now? You know? And that's kind of like, because, because the concept of whether you had the five, the five years and you're saying, what, what are you going to do? We, 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 in, in life, we don't know if we've got five years, we will hope to live to a hundred years old, but, but why? Yeah. You know, if you want but that's that hundred... it. If you, if you have a deadline, if you have a ticking clock, kind of like when you get a terminal illness diagnosis, you get that t- cancer diagnosis and you're told mm-hmm. you only have X amount of time. But in this, in this film's logic, it's not just about, okay, you have five years, what are you going to do over five years? It's like, are you willing to live? Uh, is it more about having five years of life and appreciating the tiniest things along the way? Or is it about having one year of life and experiencing and appreciating more. What what's more important? In my opinion, I I I think I'd probably go closer to a year and actually live that life yeah, more second, than you could. I second that. Like you go on holiday, you see the type of shit you wouldn't like. You need to see in like completing your life. Like I'm asking you like based what? on your situation right now. So for Adam, yes, but Paul, yeah. with wife but, and child. Yeah, but what are we talking about? That I'm going to die in five years, no matter what. No, you've yeah, got five you can't years get any more time. Five years is your max. You've got five years on your arm. There's no way to top it up. I could still go. I could still go to a tropical island and live yeah, for a week. Years. And then you don't get five years with Zoe and Woody. Why is why suddenly why suddenly a tropical island costing? Mate, how four years? It's expensive to get there. <laughs> you got to get there on that plane. It depends live. what the currency is. Forget this. I'm not doing tropical this. island and all of that, man. I'm I'm spending time with my loved ones as long as I can. That's well, that's yes. life for my me. My loved ones that's are going to be with me. I'm sorry. This is the thing. It's about I wouldn't be spending it. I feel like if I'm told I've only got these few years now, I'm going to go and be with my loved ones for as long as I can and live a good life with them, however much that costs. But I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be spending on any any foolishness like that. I'm not going to no islands. I'm not getting a big speedy car so we can jet around and all of that. I'd no, rather you wouldn't get a car and shit, but you, I, you do experiences, man. Like you go see places and you just do all that kind of stuff. You ain't can't, can't see many places in five years, considering you, once uh, you get there, you've only got three be- left. Yeah, it's difference between like spending stuff on material things like that would go out the window completely. But see, that's what was interesting about this film because it wasn't just a substitute. It wasn't just like let's swap time in for money. It was a case of you earn the time, but then you got to spend the time to live. It's already ticking down. Yeah. Whereas money, when you earn money. It sits in your account until you spend it. Whereas in the yeah. logic of this, the time sits in your account and ticks down whether you spend it or not. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of it's almost like of like forcing you to think about like actually living right now or or trying to attain more time. It's like it's it's mm. it's, it's like you've got one or the other. Yeah, because it's got to tick down regardless, just like real life. It's got to tick down regardless. Yeah. And all they keep doing, like they in the film, it's like, oh, it cost three three minutes for a cup of coffee yesterday, and now it's four. And then yeah. you start saying, is that cup of coffee worth it? Maybe I could do something extra with that that minute of time. Yeah, it's weird. But also, the whole thing is like you could do that today, like with money in some circumstances. You could think, all right, let's just live for today. But you know that you get, you could spend that for five years and you spend all your money, and now you're actually really fucked because now you've got no money and you've got to start again at a certain age. Whereas in that, if you spend all your money, you know you're going to die. It's a bit depressing, but at least you're not, mm. like, you're fucked on the end of it. You haven't got to deal with the consequences of it as such, maybe. Yeah, because how did, how did they acquire more? They, acqu- they acquired more time. The rich like people were they acquire- shit like that. What about the rich people? Did they acquire? Know, interest Probably because the they were still like assets. CEOs. So when their workers went out and earned for them, like a day's worth of productivity, a day's worth of productivity gets tallied onto them. Mm. Yeah. Crazy. The rich get richer, that's the law of the land. Mm. Whether it's it time is. or minutes. You earn off other people. Time or money. You earn mean. off other people. But the resources, when the resources run out, I tell you, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or fucking poor. There is too little left for too many people anyway. So whether you're rich or poor, you ain't going to be able to afford it because it ain't going to be there. I see it. Well, Save the planet. 
you know, once upon a time, because currency has changed over over generations, um, it wasn't always money, for example. No, it would have been like beans and shit, man. Yeah. Mm. People would have traded food. People used to trade like um, cowrie shells in parts of Africa hundreds of years ago. Maybe not even... A, what shells? Cowrie shells. They're them white shells with the with the gap in the middle. They, they, they're they like seashells. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. They used to trade those. And like in certain places, they, they trade things like... Um, I think <laughs> I might be thinking of Waterworld. Uh, um, <laughs> she, uh, you, you know, she, I think they were trading shells as well. Um, but it's that kind of it's that kind of whole like why does this hold current? Why does it hold value? It holds value because you put value in it. Yeah, you know, just the same yeah. with money. Money is paper. Right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. We, we exactly. put va- we put va- we put value into it, and that's the only reason it works. So now we live in an mm-hmm. age where you know you've got cryptocurrency. And it only works or it's or it will it's currently kind of working anyway because people are putting faith into it. You know? Yeah. You've got to have enough people putting faith into it to say da da da. But if the whole system fell, what, what like like COVID times, what's important? Oh I gotta get food. I gotta get food. Yeah. I gotta make sure I've got food. You know, that's yeah. the first thing. That's the first thing anybody goes for. Right? They're not thinking mm-hmm. about money, they're not thinking about any of that. They're thinking, I need to survive. You've gone back to that primitive survival mode, you know? Yeah. Totally. Alright, so that's what we think about the film, but we reached out to you lot and we wanted to see what you lot thought about the film. Alexa Love says, surprisingly better than I thought. It reminded me of the Ewan McGregor film, The Island in the category of surprisingly great and underrated sci-fi romances. <laughs> You're talking some shit. What left a lasting impression was the beautiful <laughs> visuals. You are on some shit. <laughs> I respect her opinion. I'm glad you appreciated it, Alexa Loves. <laughs> Next we have Colby Mack, the Colby Mack. He says, Hella underrated. I love the world that's built here. I want so much more from it. Well, I, I love the idea that's built, yeah. not the world, no, necessarily. No, the idea, yeah. So next we have Stephen Geiger, and he says, I really, I really like this film. Um, I love the concept of the film as currency and how it's still hoarded by the wealthy. Crazy parallels to real world with time is money, Monica. Um, it's the only currency that cannot truly be replaced, which is what makes this so interesting. I want more. I want more too. Mm. We all want mm. more. We all, we all want, want a bit more from the story, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, the last one here is from Ren Geekness. I find it underrated. The execution certainly does not live up to the very creative and fresh concept, mm-hmm. but the movie does work its mechanics well enough to create an engaging story. I agree with you there. I agree some... with the first yeah. half. What's Morgan Freeman mm-hmm. say at the end of Seven? That quote applies here. He says, Hemingway once wrote, the world is a good place and worth fighting for. I agree with the second part. That's a fucking line. That's a mm. great line. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with this. I'm surprised at how much people fucking liked it in those comments. I know. I know. I thought I was going to be like the outlier in this thing because I was like, oh shit, it's not worked for me. <laughs> I think it's the type. Yeah, I think it's the type of film that that you can you can like to you like to not like. Yes. Um, but you can watch it again. You know. I- and it's so I enjoyed this last hour and a half much more than I enjoyed watching the movie. Yeah. So it provoked the conversations. <laughs> yes. I straight away saw it. why Danny picked it, and I knew that Danny would pick this type of film as well. Uh, but yeah, the film itself isn't very good. Danny, I was waiting. I thought you were going to pick something else, and I was so excited to do it for the episode, and then you didn't fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he was going to pick? I'm not going to say in case we ever have him back, and he and he feels under pressure to pick it. No. no I'm I'm say it. Oh, don't worry, I won't. Tell me. <laughs> I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna suggest paid in full. I do use. Uh, you know, I knew you was. I did know you were gonna say. Did I know you were gonna say that? I thought you were gonna say that. I Maybe I that said film. that to you in a WhatsApp before. I can't remember. I, th- I think it was. Yeah, and I was oh, like, um, I re- I thought it was a bit racist. That's why. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love that film. Um, I love that film, and I love that soundtrack. <laughs> I was ready to talk next time. There's pressure on you. See, Danny, I thought you were going to pick New Jack City because that's the film you always told me about when we used to work together. It's also racist. I would have loved New Jack yeah. City too, man. <laughs> New, oh, New Jack City is a New Jack City is one of those that you you kind of have to. Uh, it's gritty. It's proper gritty, you know. Yeah, it is. And, uh, Even Chris Rock is gritty in that, man. Yeah, yeah, he really brought it. 
He really he's not well. well. He is not well in that. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I um, I I I like I like the thought provoking and um, um, and yes. and I'm and I'm glad I was able to to talk to you about this, especially since we don't get enough time, uh, to like we once upon a time did. Um, I know, you know. To, this to is throwing understand. me back to when uh, we all were listeners. We all used to work together many moons ago. These guys generally work together now, but I'm out of the loop. But days used to be spent like this, hours and hours of just chatting yep. like this. It was beautiful. Well, it was working, the best yeah. of times. Yeah. As well as a bit of working, yeah. <laughs> it was the good old days. Simple times. Simpler time. Yeah, simpler times. That's all I was about to say. <laughs> <Simpler> <laughs> time. Anyway, yeah. we've got to place this. But there's actually two more things we've got to do. We've got to place it. We've also got to pick our characters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I told you I'm Winston. <laughs> <laughs> Danny's the character we ain't even in the film. <laughs> we've got to pick our characters from in time who we most represent. And Adam would be that really annoying heavy, who's uh, the English guy. Oh yeah, who, the minute who man. does the arm wrestle, the really stupid arm wrestling thing they do, where he's like, oh, they, oh, yeah. they start looking at your, they look, start looking at your time when it's running low, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, but then you twist your arm, and then and then you know you'll win for some reason. At least I'm not Justin Timberlake. I'll take it. <laughs> who's Justin Timberlake? Is it got to be Danny? Uh, no, it's got to be you, Ben. You always want to be the star. Oh, yeah, in fact, it's got to be me. Everyone used to say I was him, so it has to be me, yeah. <laughs> what, you were just oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you motherfuckers, nobody believes me when I say this now, but when oh. when you saw me seven, eight years ago, in those days, when he was that, when he had that close-cropped hair like that, and I was a bit slimmer, people used to say that I really looked and reminded them of Justin Timberlake. In them Crimea River <laughs> days, I used to get it all <laughs> the time. All the time. <laughs> oh, you know what? I can see it, actually. No, I can yeah. see it. I can see it. A bit, a bit more, yeah. I forgot how much facial hair he had. Yeah. Paul can be Amanda Seyfried then. Oh, I love that. Oh, shit. When Amanda Seyfried rocked up, I was like, this bitch, and I was pissed <laughs> off for five minutes. But then it's because I got, I thought she was Amber Heard because she looked so similar to her. You know, Johnny Depp's, the one who's oh, accusing yes. Johnny Depp of abuse. Oh, yes, yes. So I was instantly yes. against her. And then I was like, oh, shit, that's not her. I can no, like she's her quite, now. She's quite a good actress. She's quite a good actress. She is. She was in Twin Peaks. This is one of those early roles where she's like, I never do a film this again. <laughs> they gave her a bad week. They gave her a bad week. Bad ginger week. You know, no, Paul needs to be uh, Matt Boomer. M- Matt Boomer's character, the rich guy. Or just kill him off in the first minute, yeah? No, because I... Because uh, Paul... I'm always giving Ben my time. Yeah. That's right. That's it's always right. slick slick as well. No, because <laughs> you're that quiet... I jump off a bridge. Quiet, the quiet, good-looking one, you know, has the money, oh, but he's kind of like... Good-looking? Oh, is. shit. Yeah. This, this. I am Ben. He is. That's oh, the guy. hang on. We're talking about you. I thought you were talking yeah. about Adam. No, Adam could never be Matt Boomer. Oh, I was, about <laughs> to say, I was totally <laughs> off, off the roof there. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. I was going to let Danny have Killian Murphy. I don't know if I can go for that now. Oh, he's got to be Killian. Apple, there we Apple, go, Apple, Danny. Killian, yeah. You're Killian. I'll take Killian. You love him so. I do. I do. Killian, Killian's my guy. Ever, he's ever dropped since... dead because you weren't watching your arm. Yeah, that was. <laughs> I mean, man, the guy was too dedicated to his fucking job, to tell you. <laughs> Seriously, man. He's like, I've been keeping time for 50 years, and I was like, man, where has this gotten you? Yeah. <laughs> Half my own time, and never look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a cool cat. <laughs> he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. Right, come on then, let's play this film. All right, so we took a time out there to assess the scores. It gets a 5.3, considering all four of us are here. There's only one other film that's on a 5.3, and it's... It's like last week or the episode before that's one, Jason X. Yeah. And we decided that Jason X just beats in time. So it goes Jason X yeah. in time and then three from hell. And I think that is fair to say. It's definitely better than three from hell. Yes. It's got more of everything than three from hell. <laughs> I need to see this film now. Or I'll listen to the podcast now. I just won't bother. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and that uh, that leads us on to the last bit, which is me saying what film we're going to oh, watch Oh, shit, I've totally forgotten about yes. that bit. Gotten, haven't yeah. you? <laughs> What's up next? So, I'm just going to go straight into it. The next film we're going to watch is from 2017. It's a Yorgos Lanthimos film, and it's The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Okay, interesting. Oh, this film, I've seen so many posters for it. It's got like a really cool poster, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like Nicole Kidman and um, Colin Farrell yeah. in, in an upside-down boy's silhouette. Yes. Yeah. 
I like him as a filmmaker, so I'll be eager for that. Yes, it's a, it's an interesting film. It's an interesting film. Are we going to have the deep discussion like today? Uh, not never as deep because Danny's not there. <laughs> we can get Danny in if it gets a bit if it gets a bit wayward. We we'll just ring him up. Yeah, it gets, a bit, it gets a bit peaky. <laughs> Talk to us about time, Danny. <laughs> Talk to us about time. <laughs> Go spend it wisely with your families right now. Yeah. <laughs> and eat some dinner. Some dinner. <laughs> some dinner. People, yeah, pit, people have man. tuned in to the Film Busters pod to just think, oh, I'm just going to listen to some silly fun for a little bit. And now people are questioning their life choices <laughs> after that episode. <laughs> That's what happens when you go Danny. Like, you go what to can I do? <laughs> what more can I be doing? <laughs> what can I do with my life? I've wasted it. <laughs> you got me questioning shit. I don't even know what I'm questioning. That's the thing. You've He's got, got five years got left. My logic all twisted up. <laughs> it was lovely having you on the episode, Danny. So good. So good. So, so good. Thank you for coming. That's so much fun. Thank will you, you come back invite. again? I will 100% come back again. Yeah. We bring the smoke and we bring more conversation. I love you guys. We love you too. Big love. That's just how Danny ends the podcast. <laughs> Let Danny end the podcast like that. <laughs> they don't need no socials from us. They know the socials by now. <laughs> I just say, screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> right, so you guys can get in touch with us at Filmbusters Pod on Twitter and Instagram. You can also go to our website, www.filmbusterspod.co.uk. We have all our reviews on there and all the podcasts on there. So go check them out. We also have our personal Twitter accounts. I... I'm at Filmbusters, Justin Timberlake. You ain't. <laughs> I'm at Filmbusters, Adam. I'm at Timbusters. Uh, <laughs> Timbusters. <laughs> That's it. That's, That's it. That's it. That's one. That's Timbusters. more imaginative. Yeah. I'm at Timbusters. Timbusters Lake. Yeah. <laughs> and Danny, where can they find you? And where can they find your wonderful business, Earth to Earth Organics? Yes, guys. So me and my wife, we have our own uh, uh, natural and organic skincare business, vegan friendly, helpful for the planet. Um, We love all of that kind of stuff. Um, You can find us at earthtoearthorganics.com and on social media, Instagram, Facebook, um, at earthtoearthorganics, all one word. Um, Twitter, we're not on there much, to be honest with you, but we do have a page, um, ETEO Skincare. So um, at earthtoearthorganics.com for the rest. Thank you, guys. If you wouldn't eat it, if you weren't eat it, don't put it on your body. Yeah, you almost had it. Um, Is if that you, it was? I can't if, remember. If you, you wouldn't put it in your body, don't put it on your body. And, um, and, and, the, and the one we've been running for a while is um, because we've all got skin. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I, I put that. it on my little baby, and he's such a smooth little baby now. He's a smooth operator. Are you sure that's not just baby skin going, just like baby skin anyway? Nah. This is double double soft baby skin. Yeah. <laughs> that's that earth to earth glow. That's that earth to earth shit, son. Feels <laughs> mustard.